Imagine being able to relive the computing history of the 1980s and 1990s right on your modern PC. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to 86box, a PC emulator that takes you back in time to experience the nostalgia of those classic systems. In this video, we'll explore what 86box is and some of its incredible features that make it one of the best PC emulators out there. Let's dive right in. 86box is a PC emulator that replicates the hardware of vintage IBM compatible PCs. It allows you to virtually build a retro PC by selecting your CPU, graphics card, sound card, and more. Then, just like a real PC, you will need to install the operating system, drivers, and any relevant software or games you want. A wide range of hardware is supported, making 86box a great way to experience unique add-ons like the creative music system, Ravis Ultrasound, and even graphics cards like the 3DFX Voodoo series. 86box is really for those users who like to tinker with their hardware. If you want a quick way to play classic PC games, then DOSBox might be a much better fit, but that also comes with its own complexities. I personally love setting up and configuring my own PC, and since I have very limited space to own real retro PCs, 86box scratches that itch for me. When running 86box for the first time, it defaults to an 8086 machine. However, you can go into the settings and start choosing the hardware for the computer you want to build. Here I'm building something similar to my first PC, which had a 486SX 25MHz processor. 4 megabytes of RAM, 512 video card, and Sound Blaster compatible audio. You can build a system as early as one with an 8088 CPU up until the Pentium 2 CPU. Once you have chosen the PC components you want to use, you will then have to obtain the appropriate floppy or CD images for the OS you want to install. These images are just files you select that 86 box will treat as real floppies or CDs. You can install and run operating systems like MS-DOS, Windows 3.1, Windows 95, and many others, just as if they were running on real original hardware. It's perfect for the PC retro gaming and hardware enthusiasts. Even OS2 can be installed. You will need to make sure that you choose hardware that is compatible with the operating system you're going to use. And even then, you might also need to provide drivers to get some hardware working. So 86Bot can be used to help you plan on building a real physical retro PC. I plan on doing a live stream where I build an entire system in 86Box, install the OS and drivers, and install some games and software. So keep an eye out for it, or check the description for the link if I've already streamed it. I really like to use 86box to experience some hardware I've never owned. The Gravis ultrasound and creative music system that I demonstrated earlier in this video provided some unique audio that wasn't common for PCs. Now I can't comment on the accuracy of the emulation, but it's good to have an idea of what they sounded like. But you can check the many videos on YouTube with direct recording from sound cards that you can use to compare. There are a ton of graphics options too. I used to own the original 3DFX Voodoo graphics card, and that was one of the biggest single upgrades I've ever experienced in gaming. With 86box, I also get to try out the later Voodoo cards I've never owned like the Voodoo 2, Banshee, and Voodoo 3. As far as performance is concerned, running benchmarks on the virtual PCs themselves is not really useful. Check out these tests comparing my desktop PC with a 5950X CPU and my Steam Deck. In the MDK benchmark, the timers at the bottom eventually get out of sync with my desktop PC ticking faster. However, if you look at the score given by the benchmark, they are pretty much the same. Here's another example using the Quake 2 time demo. This benchmark also demonstrates how you shouldn't use benchmarks done in the virtual PC to measure what actual performance you're getting. My desktop PC is clearly running faster. You would think that the desktop PC would end up with a much higher score than the Steam Deck. But no, the Steam Deck took about 8 seconds more to finish the time demo 
and the time demo frames per second ended up being the same. If you want to measure performance, it's better to pay attention to the percentage number that's on the top right of the 86 box window. If this number dips below 100%, that means your PC is not emulating the virtual PC fast enough. So you want this number to be at 100% as much as possible. My 5950X CPU cannot emulate the most powerful hardware available on 86 box at 100%. So I usually stick to higher end Pentium 1s or lower end Pentium 2s with that CPU. On my Steam Deck, I find that I'm able to emulate a Pentium 90 PC with a Voodoo 1 graphics card comfortably. Also, keep in mind that if you experience slowdown on a virtual PC and the performance number is at 100%, that means that the real hardware will also experience slowdown in that same situation. For example, trying to run Doom on a 386 16MHz CPU will be slow on the virtual PC you created and it will be slow on a real 386 CPU. And this is what's great about 86 box. All you have to do is virtually build a different or faster computer to get a game or program to run. In real life, you'll have to physically build that computer. So in conclusion, 86 box is a fantastic PC emulator that opens the door to a world of nostalgia and technical exploration. Whether you want to play classic games, run vintage software, or experiment with old PC hardware, 86 box has you covered. This video is meant to be an overview on what you can do with 86 box. It's not a deep dive into the program. Any deep dive can take forever and also get out of date with all the frequent updates being implemented. But I do plan on releasing more content on using 86 box because it's a program I really enjoy using. I'm also well aware of PCM, which used to be my go to PC emulator. The reason I moved to 86 box is because 86 box is in active development and has easily available ports for Linux, Mac OS and PC. I also plan to take a look at another PC emulator that has a port to Android. It would be awesome to turn my tablet or phone into a retro PC. And no, I don't plan on using a retro PC with a touchscreen. My phone and tablet have an awesome feature that turns them into a desktop PC when connected to a monitor, which will be really useful for that emulator. Anyway, if you're ready to embark on a journey back into the 80s and 90s or explore the intricacies of vintage PC hardware, give 86 box a try. You won't be disappointed or it will drive you crazy with the authentic experience of trying to get things working. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.